Are you wondering where your lost ring went to? Or are you looking for a really fun new hobby? Well, look no further than metal detecting, as it can provide very good mental and physical exercise, enjoyment of the hunt, be a good individual or group activity, and your investment of around $400 for a white or garage shallow underground metal detector could potentially be offset by finding items such as coins, rings, or earrings. And some locations where you could find those items are include beaches, parks, and creeks. Now we'll move on to our demonstration to learn more about some of the techniques used in metal. Ready to find some treasure? Me too. First thing I want to talk about what you want to wear while metal detecting. So first thing are gloves to make sure your hands don't get scraped up or dirty while digging. Second thing are knee pads for the same reason. You don't want your knees to get scraped up or dirty while digging. And the third thing are long pants so that way you aren't disturbed by the sun or any bugs while you're walking or digging or things like that. So next I'm going to talk about the actual metal detector. So Mr. Richard Angelico, who's a purveyor of the metal detectors that we talked about earlier, the Whites and the Garretts, recommends the Garrett AT Pro metal detector and the Garrett headphones. Now the headphones are used when you're metal detecting with multiple people to make sure that the signals that they get and the signals that you get aren't confused between each other and vice versa. But since we're metal detecting by ourselves, we'll just put these to the side. To turn on your metal detector, you want to push the power button in the lower left hand corner of the detector, like so. Now, this next tip is applicable to all metal detectors, not just the Garrett AT Pro. You're going to want to ground your detector to the area that you're in, because you want it to discern from the naturally occurring metals within the earth and the items that you're actually wanting to dig up. To do this, you take your metal detector and go up into the air one two, three, and four times, and now it has been grounded. Next, I'm going to show the proper technique in order to make sure you don't miss any items. You want to keep your metal detector, or the coil as this is called, down and to the ground, and you want to go left and right, not picking up your metal detector on the sides like so. So you're going to want to go low and slow to the ground until you come across your first signal as such. Now, on the metal detector, it references a number of 90. That means, and from the tone also, I know that that is an aluminum item. And sure enough, it's an aluminum doubloon. This represents trash, pop tops, cans that we're not really interested in, and it's not worth digging up. So we're going to keep going, low and slow to the ground, and we come across another item. Now it's a lower sound, and it produces a number around 50 to 60. And because of that, we know that it's a lead item. Sure enough, it's a lead bullet from the Civil War. If we keep going, we come across another item. It's having a little trouble picking it up, but it is an iron item. And it produces a number around 20 to 30. Sure enough, it is also an iron item from the Civil War of a gun piece. Because of that, the lower the tone is, the lower the number, and you're able to discern the different metals. Now, because we've identified a signal, we're going to want to dig it up. So I'm going to take my shovels, which are nice and long and serrated on the side to be able to break up the roots and the dirt around your item that you're wanting to dig up. And we're going to go ahead and dig around and form a perimeter around where the signal was. And now that we've dug, dug it up, we need to pinpoint ex its exact location by using what's called a pinpointer. Also a gear recommended by Mr. Richard Angelico. So we're going to take it, now that it's on, and we're going to go until it starts to buzz and beep. And that represents the exact location of the item that you're wanting to dig up. And sure enough, we found it, we clean it off, and we're going to preserve it for our future enjoyment. Remember these important tips. Ask permission of the property owner. Leave the area as you found it by covering your holes. Hydrate and bring food. Keep a journal of your finds so that we remember where you've been. But most importantly, have fun. The future of metal detecting will be both rewarding and challenging. Challenging because places are becoming harder to find that haven't already been detected and coronavirus with the age of social distancing. However, it's so rewarding as online communities of finds and knowledge are helping people recover lost important items 
and per the preservation of items that have historical value. Some of the resources used in this presentation are seen on screen that you can use to find your own metal detector. So it's your turn to get out there. Happy hunting.